One thing, you never know what to expect. <laughs> if you seen the bulletin, if you read the bulletin, I'm not Tom. Tom's a young, good-looking guy. I'm the old man. <laughs> But you know, if I get mixed up this morning, it's because I lost one hour, hour of sleep. Oh. I'd getting up before I told my wife because I normally never set the clock because I always wake up. But when they switched the time, I said set it. But I, it didn't matter. I woke up anyway. So this morning, I'm going to read a little thing I found in a, my Hillbilly magazine that I get. <laughs> because this is this is a little something different and then my message or scriptures things will be tied to this. So now listen carefully as I read this. It starts out words in the order of their importance. The seven most important words in the English language are I made a mistake and I am sorry. The six most important words are you did a very good job. The five most important words are and what is your opinion? The four most important words are how can I help? The three most important words are I appreciate you. The two most important words are thank you. The least important word is I. Now, I'm going to quote some scripture that I got written down, then we're going to read some. In Romans 12 3, Paul says, not to think of oneself more highly than he ought to think. Paul says in Galatians 6 3, For if a man thinketh himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15 9, now listen to this because if you read the pedigree of Paul, you know where he come from. He, Paul was not just an average guy, he was educated beyond. And listen to what he says. I am least among the apostles, not fit to be called apostle, for I persecuted the church. That's the attitude we all should have. Paul says in Ephesians 3.8, talking about God's grace that allowed him to go preach to the Gentiles. He said, least of all saints, get the grace given to me to preach to the Gentiles. The scripture says in Luke 18, 10 through 14, two men went up to pray. We've, we, you know that story. One was a Pharisee and one was a publican. The Pharisee talked about how great he was. That's the eye problem. And the publican beat himself in the chest and wouldn't even raise his eyes. And the scripture said, which one come down forgiven? And this one is the one that the pastor quotes quite often. You know, we is the same thing as I when you got two, two, two or more I's put together. That, that comes we. Uh, the Lord says, not all that call my name will enter in. And here's the problem. We prophesied. We cast out devils in your name. we done many great works. What they should have said, Lord, thank you for the grace that sent your son from heaven to die in my place. That's what they should have said. But no, they got the we had an eye problem. That's what this whole thing was about that I just read. That's, that's what it's talking about. Now if I can get these papers apart. Now, I want you to take the Bible and go over to James because I'm going to read this one because this is to do with the church. It's the same thing but it has to do with the church. James chapter 2 we're going to read 1 through 4. James 2 
1 through 4. My brethren, have not the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of glory, with respect a person. For if there cometh unto you your assembly, a man with golden rings and goodly apparel, and there cometh also a poor man in vile raiment, and you have respect on him that were at the gate closing, and say unto him, Set thou here in a good place, and say unto the poor, Stand thou, or set under a footstool. Are you not partial in yourself, and become judge of evil thoughts? You get what they're saying? We are to treat everybody with the same respect. There's no difference between those that have wealth and those that don't have wealth. That's not the Christian way of doing things. Now I turn to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 which sums it all up. Why we are not to have the eye problem. Verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says this, For by grace ye are saved through faith, and not that of yourself is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You see, salvation is not by what we do. It's what He did. Therefore we have no bragging rights whatsoever we are to remember those other words that I quoted and not the one that is the least of all words. Let us pray. Our Father, we do thank you for this day. We thank you for the beauty of it as it begins to look like spring. We thank you for this opportunity to gather once more in your house. And we ask that you would be in each part of this service. We very pray for the singing and for each part and for our pastors. He brings the message, helping to be able to lift each one up and honor you in the message he has today. We ask that you would be with those that are sick. We do think especially of Kay and falling. We just pray that you would be with her and just heal up what's been bruised. We don't think there's any broken bones. Just be her portion at this time. Also, we want to lift up Forrest. We know that his home going is getting close, and we know that yet this is a hard for the family, and we would just pray that you would be with Ivan and the kids and be his portion and be close to them, bind up the broken hearts and the sadness in their life at this time. Also, we ask that you would be with... Uh, Nancy's brother-in-law and sister and we know that there's a need there just touch and heal according to your will we think of Kathy King and the upcoming surgery just be with her and for Noreen's great nephew just guide and direct in the surgery here thank you once more for this time and for the, an opportunity to be in your house we pray in Christ's name Amen